Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian McLogan and in this video I'm going to show you how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. I'm going to do that by working through 52 different examples as you can kind of see down below here. Now when I'm working through these examples um, I am choosing a lot of the same numbers and I'm keeping the examples fairly basic. I've stopped counting for some reason. And the reason why I did that is because I really want you to focus on the process that I am applying as well as kind of the patterns that happen with each of these operations as well as with each number. I'm not going to get into the depth of, you know, the understanding of each of these operations with fractions, but more really just focus on the process so therefore you can be more efficient when you are applying the operations as well as kind of build up your confidence. So we have a lot of examples, so I want to kind of get started right away. So first example here, we have one fourth plus one sixth. And the important thing is when we're combining fractions, that means adding or subtracting, we have to have common denominators. And just a quick little sidebar here, you know, when you have common denominators, for instance, like one third plus one third, then we keep the denominator, you know, one third plus one third, we add the numerator, which would be two thirds, um, you know, two thirds, because we know that one third plus one third plus one third is going to make three thirds, which is a whole, right? And you can always think of like a pie or blah, 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 but I wanted to at least cover it. I don't, I'm not gonna get in depth for a lot of these examples, but I just wanna make sure that when we're adding and as well as subtracting, we have to have that common denominator. So in this, in this case, we do not have a common denominator. One denominator is four, one denominator is six. Um, so to obtain a common denominator, what we need to do is identify the large, or sorry, the smallest number um, that both four and six divide into. Now. Um, let me preface this. I am going to take a little bit longer of explaining each operation that's kind of new. Um, and then as obviously once we repeat those same types of problems, I'm not going to get the depth explanation. But for right now, just to, for those of you that maybe are following me at a little you know, slower pace, you're not as familiar with the fractions, the multiples of 4 would be 4, 8, 12, you know, 16, 20. Whereas the multiples of 6, 6 would be 6, 12, 18, you know, 24. And again, we want to find the least common multiple or the least common denominator between these two, which we recognize here to be 12. So therefore, that is the smallest number that six and four and six have in common, which we call our least common multiple or least common denominator. So our goal now is to multiply both of these fractions so they have that common denominator. You don't have to use the least common denominator, but it's going to be more work on yourself if you don't. So to get 12, I need to multiply four by three. But it's very important that we need to understand we can't just multiply a fraction by the by you know one denominator of the numerator because then you won't produce what we call an equivalent fraction, right? If I took one third and I multiplied that by let's say four on the denominator, then I'd have one twelfth. Well, one third does not equal one twelfth. However, if I take one third and multiply it by four over four, well, let's not put a fraction, but let's just put it as four over four. that's gonna give me 4 twelfths, which can be reduced to 1 third. So it's very important when we're gonna be using these multiples that I'm gonna multiply on the top as well as the bottom. So that's gonna give me 3 twelfths here. And then, however, to add 3 twelfths to 1 six, I gotta get six to be 12, right? So we figure, well, what do I need to multiply six by to get it to be 12? That's going to be a two. So that's going to be a 2 twelfths. And just like we kind of learned up here, when we have two fractions with common denominators, we just apply the operation, addition or subtraction, to the numerator. So in this case, we're going to have 5 twelfths. Okay, kind of ran out a little bit of room there, but therefore. All right, so the next example, exactly the same. The only difference here is our denominators are 3 and 2. Um, so therefore, uh, we recognize here that the product is actually the multiple of both of them, right? So here, their common denominator is 12. This was times 3, this was times 2. This is a nice little case. You can see that the common multiple between 3 and 2 is actually the product of them, which is 6, right? So a lot of times, I'm just going to write LCD equals 6. I'll start doing this in my head. But you can see that really you can multiply these. And that works for all of them. Like if you get stuck on what is the LCD, you can always multiply the denominators to get a common denominator, right? So six times four is 24. And you can see actually that would have been the next common um, multiple that four and six share. To make sure that we're not doing more work or simplifying later than we have to, that's why we always want to find the least common multiple. But if you get stuck, just find a common multiple and multiply them together. A lot of times that the product is the least common multiple. All right, so in this case here, um, 
I'm going to just multiply this by a two over two, and here I'll multiply by three over three. So therefore I have two over six minus three over six, which equals a negative one over six. All right, and that negative could be up top or bottom, I just wrote it um, in the top. All right, this next one is one minus one half. Now this shows up a lot, and a lot of, you could probably say like if you have a whole and minus a half, then that's gonna be another half. But the main important thing that I wanna kind of work in with this is you know, when we're looking at one, if when we're, you know, applying operations with a whole number to a fraction, we want to make sure we can represent that whole number as a fraction. And sometimes it's easier to just take that number and put it over one. But in this case, we're actually going to want to represent our whole number one as a fraction with two, right? Because we want to use the same denominator. So it's just important for you to understand if I, two over two is the same thing as one. But by representing my whole number as a fraction, now I can just subtract directly across which gives me one half, all right? Um, so there you go, that's simple converting your whole numbers. And again, guys, as I mentioned, we're kind of getting things a little bit quick here. Um, last thing, let's understand kind of division before I really start ramping into these problems or just kind of going through them a little bit quicker. So for division, you know, sometimes we can write division like this, but other times it might be easier to write a division problem like this. And what you can recognize is that's way too many fraction bars, right? Fraction bar, fraction bar, fraction bar. So the idea is if I can get this denominator to be equal to one, then I'm only going to have one fraction bar, right? Because I won't be, I'll dividing by one, which is not really going to, you know, just gives you the same thing as the numerator. So how do I get one sixth to be one? That's going to produce keeping it in an equivalent fraction. Well, I can produce equivalent fractions by multiplying the same number on the top and the bottom. So what can I multiply by one over six to produce one? Well, that would be the reciprocal, which is six over one. One over six times six over one is six over six, which is just one. Anything divided by one is just anything, uh, you know, it's itself. So therefore we're left with six fourths, which can be reduced to three halves. Now this is important. What I, the reason why I wanted to go through this is you can see that when I'm dividing by a fraction, that is the same process as multiplying, oops, but yeah, by multiplying by the reciprocal. So from now on, when I have these division problems, I'm just gonna multiply by the reciprocal to quickly do these problems. Um, did I not do multiplying here? Oh, I did do multiplying. Wow, it took me a while to get to the multiplying. All right, so let's go and do fractions. Um, not a common denominator. We see the else common denominator here is 12. So I'm gonna multiply by four over four. I'm gonna start picking it up here, guys. And then here I'm gonna multiply by three over three. Since I'm using a red pen, I'm not gonna show the multiplying or the multiplication or parentheses just for the sake of time. So therefore this is going to be four over 12 minus three over 12, which is equal to one over 12. Here, I don't wanna use the common denominator of eight. I wanna use the common denominator of four. So I'm just gonna multiply by two over two. That gives me a two fourths minus one fourth, which is equal to one fourth. Here, I'm gonna to wanna to re-represent three, or one, I'm sorry, as three over three. So one minus three is going to be a negative two thirds. Here, again, you could probably do this in your head, but let's just rewrite two as, or one, I'm sorry, as two over two. So therefore, that's gonna give me a negative one half. Again, now we're multiplying by the reciprocal, so I'm just gonna rewrite this as a one half times six over one. Well, in reality here, this is really just six divided by two, which we know is the answer is three. Here, I can just rewrite this as one half times three over one. Oh, well, I guess I should probably at least describe when we're multiplying fractions, remember, you're multiplying directly across, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Do not be applying cross multiplication or some other kind of trick that you might've learned. When you multiply fractions, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Dividing, we represent by multiplying by the reciprocal. So there's, you know, sometimes things can be divided or simplified, and then other times we're just gonna get a fraction like three halves that cannot, um, there's nothing else to do. Here, if I multiply by the reciprocal, I'm just gonna get a fraction three fourths. Um, here, I'm gonna represent one as four over four. I don't know why I wrote that in there, so that'd be five fourths. And here you can see my first multiplying problem, which is just going to be one eighth. Nothing crazy I need to do, okay? Um, all right, so now we've really kind of covered the basics here. Um, and so now this kind of like, you know, pick up a little bit of the speed. Again, finding the common denominator, which would be four, so multiply by two over two. 
So 1 fourth minus 2 over 4, which is going to equal a negative 1 fourth. Let's see, common denominator is 12, so 4 times 4, and 3 times 3, so that's 4 over 12 plus 3 over 12. Um, let's see, multiply by 2 over 2, common denominator is 6, so 1 over 6 minus 2 over 6 equals negative 1 sixth. Here the common denominator is 12, not 24, right? You can use 24, um, but let's, don't want to do that. Actually, you know what, let's just kind of do it. Let's do it for four, let's do it for 24. Let's pretend I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do this times four over four and six over six. So if you do that, you get four over 24 minus six over 24, which gives you a negative two over tw 24, which now you have to simplify to a negative one twelfth. All right, so that's not a big deal. I mean, you just had to do an extra step to simplify it. But if I would have just multiplied this by two minus three, you'd see you would have got negative one over 12. It would have been a lot easier. So six over six, and that's going to be five six. You already rewrite this as three over three, which is four thirds. I write this as six over six, which is a negative five over six. Here I'll multiply by the reciprocal, so I'll just change this. Um, I'll just rewrite it. One third times six over one, so six over three, which is just two. I'll rewrite this as four over four, which is a three fourths. Multiply straight across, that's one over 18. Rewrite this as three over three, so that's going to be a two thirds. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. Um, multiply by the reciprocal here, so 1 6 times 2 over 1, which is going to be 2 over 6, which I can reduce now to 1 third. Okay, basically I can divide the top and the bottom by 2. Um, here I'm taking a whole number, dividing it by a fraction, so that's 2 over 1. Again guys, you could always write 1 over 1, and therefore when you multiply across you get 2, 2 over 1, which is just 2. Don't really need to write the 1 in there. Here, common denominator is 12, so 3 over 3, 4 over 4. Let's see, that's going to be a negative 1 twelfth. Here, the common denominator is 3, not 12. Don't want to do that. That's just more work, right? 1 over 6 minus 3 over 12. If you do that, if you did um, 12, then I have to multiply this by 2 and that by 6, and it's just more things. You can see <laughs> I got 12 in my brain. Um, you can see when I multiply just this side by three or three, I got common denominators. That's what I want to get. Um, and the faster you can do that, the more efficient you know, you're going to do. And I keep on wanting to say 12. So that's a negative two over six, guys, which gets reduced to a um, negative one third. All right, let's go ahead and combine here. Again, same kind of idea. Two over two, so therefore, um, that's 2 over 6, that's going to be 3 over 6, which is equal to 1 half. Um, common denominator is 6, so 3 over 3 times 2 over 2. So this would be 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6, which is equal to 1 over 6. Here I'll rewrite 1 as 4 over 4, so therefore that's going to be a negative 3 fourths. Here I'll just multiply straight across, which is 1 twelfth. Uh, common denominator is 12, multiply by 3 over 3, that's going to be 4 over 12, which I can simplify, like 4 divides into the numerator one time, 4 divides into the denominator three times. Um, here dividing by a fraction, so it's 1 times the reciprocal of 1 6 is just 6, so you can see that answer is just 6. Multiply straight across, 1 over 24. Uh, get common denominator of 3 over 3, so this is 3 over 6 minus one over six equals two over six, which reduces to one third. Uh, one half plus one third common denominator is six. Let's multiply by three over three and two over two. Basically the product again. So it's three over six plus two over six, which equals five over six. Here common denominator is two, or I'm sorry, common denominator is four. So therefore, we'll have 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which is equal to 3 over 4. Fractions, multiply straight across, 1 over 12. Um, dividing by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. So 1 third times 2 over 1, which is 2 thirds. 1 third minus 1 sixth, uh, again, multiply by 2 over 2. So that's going to be 2 over 6 minus 1 over 6, 1 over 6. 1 half divided by 1 fourth, so this would be 1 half times 
Uh, 4 over 1. 4 divided by 2 is just equal to 2. 1 fourth times, <laughs> times 2 over 1. 2 over 4 can be reduced to 1, uh, 2 over 4, which is, eh, which can be reduced to 1 half. And then again, we're doing another, divide by the fraction. So that's a 4 over 1. So therefore, that gives you 4 over 6, which can be reduced to a 2 thirds. Next example for the ones that I decided to stop counting on, 1 plus 1 sixth, is, let's, re, let's rewrite this as 6 over 6. So that's going to be 7 6. Uh, multiply by the reciprocal, so that's 1 third times 4 thirds, which, I'm sorry, 1 over 6 times 4 over 1, which is 4 thirds. Uh, let's rewrite this as 2 over 2, so therefore that's 3 halves. Multiply straight across. Um, here I am subtracting, so therefore I get common denominators, which is 12. So that'd be 3 times 3 and 2 times 2. So therefore that's 3 over 12 minus 2 over 12, which is equal to a negative, no, that's not a negative, that's a positive. 3 minus 2 is just a positive 1 12th. Uh, 1 sixth times 3 over 1, which is 3 over 6, which is equal to 1 half. 1 times 3 over 1, or just 3, is 3. And 1 times 4 is equal to 4. So you can see how that product worked. I know all my numerators, guys, was 1. But um, hopefully you kind of start to see that the patterns that we're starting to develop as far as the, you know, dividing. At first, I kind of explained dividing rather you know, rather a little bit in detail, understanding why we flip multiply by the reciprocal. But then you can see once I got to the division problems, I was able to just kind of quickly get into them and just flip it and then multiply straight across. Um, you know, a lot of the ideas, you know, a lot of the times when you're doing fraction operations, um, you will obviously have different numbers with different leading, uh, leading common denominators. And you can always just list out the multiples. That is one easy visual way to identify the common denominator or you, another way just to find a common denominator was just to multiply them. But you just got to be careful. If you just multiply your denominators and it's not the least common denominator, then you're going to have to simplify. And again, really the idea of simplifying is finding a number that divides evenly into the numerator as well as into the denominator. Did I not finish that problem? That is 7 twelfths. So, you know, for example, again, 6 over 3, that gets simplified to 2 because 3 divides into 6 two times. 2 over 6 can be simplified to 1 third because 2 divides into 2 one time and 2 divides into 6 three times. So you just kind of work through those identifying, seeing if the numerator and denominator have common, um, have common factors that you can divide out through both of them. And the last thing I can't mention enough to make, to make sure you're very careful with, you know, multiplying and dividing, you don't need common denominators. You just multiply and you multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and dividing is most easily um, used as to multiply by the reciprocal. However, for addition and subtraction, you have to have common denominators. And when you're identifying common denominators by multiplying by a scalar, please make sure you are producing equivalent fractions. Do not just multiply a fraction by a number in the denominator and not on the top because three-fourths or one-third is not equal or I could say this one third does not equal one twelfth. Okay, so you cannot just multiply a number in there. However, if you multiply by that four on the top and the bottom, you do produce an equivalent fraction. And again, when you're applying the operation, the adding or subtracting, you know, you combine those operations in the numerator and then keep the denominator as there. And always look to simplify at the end. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed and I hope now that you can get um, a little bit more familiar with your fraction operations. See you next time.